I started a follow-up video forever ago in the ARC A380, and a lot has happened since then. I was keen on going over the improvements since the inception of the first draft of this video, mentioning briefly what Intel's been up to, also talking about some of the criticisms and whatnot that I've received about Resizable Bar, and overall telling you at the end of the day that for the most part, the GPU is usable per case and scenario, but that ultimately you should not buy this GPU. And yeah, you probably shouldn't. But then I watched a video by Iceberg Tech on the ARC A380 that he uploaded a while ago, which summed up pretty much my exact thoughts on this card. Which then prompted me, after working with the card once more, to rewrite this entire script because, spoilers, the ARC A380 is worse than what I initially thought. I may be a tech tuber, but I also watch other tech tuber videos from time to time, and while I already had my ARC A380 video said and done and ready to voice over, I watched a short from Iceberg Tech from around a year ago, which prompted me to watch his full review on the ARC A380, which unsurprisingly had the same card that I own from ASRock in his video. I fully recommend checking out that video on the card by the way, link somewhere in the top right corner or in the description and his experiences painted one of the best pictures compared to any other big tech channel, in my opinion. But if you don't care or want the spoiler-free TLDR of what happened, well, he was able to get his data and get it to work for the most part, sort of, but it was just a very disappointing card. Like, for its price to performance, you would be better off just buying an RX 580 and being done with it at this point. Why? Well, here's a spoiler. It is a pain to own. Wait, what? Shock? Gasp? Yes, I know, truly a surprising statement. But the RK380 is such a spectacle to me. Why is it so bad? Or rather, troublesome is a better word. We could look at numbers all day. But the truth is, I have two big reasons on why it isn't that great. Let's start off by talking about Iceberg Tech's experiences with the card. As he mentioned, overall data and statistics were underwhelming. A lot of games, new ones I might add, didn't garner high yields in terms of performance. And honestly, the numbers aren't terrible, but for what you're paying for, the results aren't very good for what the hardware advertises. This is one issue, and if it were the only issue, this card would be just subpar at worst, and fine at best. But the truth of the matter is... Awesome. Uh, I have to rewrite this whole script for the third No, no, hang on. Okay, let me... Let me just get back to this by saying, this video isn't about Iceberg, and me clearly stealing all the data from his video to make a point. More so about his experiences, and those experiences in relation to mine. I am not lazy, I promise you. I will get to the meat and potatoes here. I had problems with this card too, just, just stick with me for a little. So, TLDR. Not much has changed, except things are a tad more stable. But that is the issue. While drivers have improved since my video and his video, it isn't the best card to own. The number of issues ranging from compatibility, performance, and ease of use are just a small sample of what is wrong with this card. You could look at any one person's video on the frame data or otherwise to know this. We just won't look at mine because I have no frame data. And you see, the issue I have is much bigger than any of those things, something he in inadvertently mentioned in a way. And no, it isn't resizable bar, but it is related. Three words. Consistency. Reliability. Usability. How many times have you worked with your computer and had to treat it like a Nissan Maxima? Have it maintenanced or looked at once every month or so because there were constant issues that slowed you down or made it impossible to use? Because I think that's what's partially wrong with this card. Sure, if you're an enthusiast like myself, and I know my audience, you might do some jerry-rigging on certain parts, or some sketch setups from time to time. But this is your own undoing at the end of the day. It shouldn't be the fault of a manufacturer that you have to put your PC on jacks and work on it in unconventional ways unless the circumstances make sense as to why you have to do so. Iceberg went over all the little things that he tried in his first video to find good or just outright better results, to which nothing significant really changed when he experimented with trying to make the A380 run more efficient and effectively. And he even had a hiccup in his latest video on the subject, which is putting it lightly because I don't think it should ever really be hard to install drivers onto a computer. I guess he just didn't wash his hands well enough. And the thing is, many people 
also experience issues like these ones when owning this card, whether it be using it daily or swapping it out to use it for tests and such. Like myself. Here are the meat and potatoes. I tested this card, installed drivers, put it in my daily system, but I was missing one key feature, resizable bar. Aw, well that sucks. I was even called misleading because of this in my first video. Well that double sucks. I am too poor to buy brand new hardware that should just make it work. Except, I have hardware to do this with. I have an ASUS ROG B550F motherboard in my day-to-day -day system. Well, I guess I just should just go ahead and throw it in there. Well, hang on there, partner. We need to enable resizable bar in the BIOS first. What's that? There isn't an option in my BIOS? That's strange. Turns out I need to update my BIOS. Okay, I will do that then. Should be simple enough, right? First, I went through the trouble of downloading the wrong BIOS because ASUS made a second version of this board that if you aren't paying attention to this little detail will waste hours of your life trying to update with no success because you are looking for problems that just straight up don't exist. I know this is not Intel's fault, but no one should experience this if you want to use the latest hardware that requires features that are still fairly new. Two, well then take another day to finally get the correct BIOS only after learning for some reason, it only worked when I had to write my flash drive as a master boot record. To then, three, not be able to boot to Windows anymore. And awesome, I am, I, I am glad that this is what I have to do in order to use this card. Once again, I know that this is more of Asus's fault than anything, but th this is truly ridiculous. I had to run my system in CSM in order to use Windows, and to this day I still do. Which, guess what? You can enable resizable bar if you have CSM enabled. I know that my situation is a bit more extreme than probably most people who own this card, and there are probably is a solution or something that I can do to fix this, but should someone go through this at the end of the day? This is my experience. Should someone who is probably pinching pennies, who wants a small decent upgrade on an older system, have to do this? But budget bin, most people who buy this have systems that can support it, do they? Because I'm sure most people who are building brand new gaming PCs are more likely to buy much more expensive parts than the inverse. They would be more likely to buy an A750 or an A770 than the measly Airbus A380. I was so close to defending this card initially when I was working on revisiting this for the video, because if it comes down to the wire, this wouldn't be too bad if you wanted it in your newer system. But honestly, that is a strong maybe. No one should jump through hoops and hurdles to run something like this out of the box, unless they plan to make it go above and beyond its intended capabilities, like overclocking and so forth. If this were an AMD card or NVIDIA GPU, people would be up in arms to yell and complain that this is complete nonsense, and that this should be amended, or that these companies are creating unnecessary barriers just to get some decent hardware for a cheap price out to customers, at the cost of the consumers needing newer or expensive hardware in order to use it. It isn't just a simple update of the drivers, it's way more worse than it should be. Oh, <sighs> okay. Let me, let me walk it back a little. Alright, listen. If you own this card or any RGP for that matter, odds are you made it work and it probably works splendidly in your system. This is great and I'm happy that this is the case for you. Just know my fight isn't with you. Because I know that I am somewhat of an outlier here because of my motherboard for whatever reason. But if I have to buy another system or go through a bunch of unnecessary steps to find a solution to a problem that shouldn't be this crazy or outright insane, then I'm not sorry. It isn't a good product at the end of the day. I'm not saying we need to accept this, like it's the GT1630, but if it makes it easier, look towards the successors when they release, since in the end, Intel is still new to all of this. And I don't want them to quit. I don't want a hate bandwagon at their heels or anything like that. I like Team Red, not so much Team Green, but I want more options with fairly decent prices, and Team Blue definitely can do that, as they have shown themselves to do so already. And you know what? There is a silver lining here. In a couple of years, I bet this card will get a 9, 13, or even 20% performance increase as new drivers pour out of Intel's headquarters, and that, over time, people will be getting much newer motherboards and CPUs that can support this hardware on top of these parts becoming more reliable. Because, as of now, it still isn't a good option. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and don't hate my guts as a result of it. <clears throat> Thank you to Iceberg Tech for making his videos since they enabled me to make a much better script. Trust me, the original one sucked. 
and thank you for giving me a chance by watching all the way to the end. If you like this video, like it. Subscribe for more if you want more spicy, not spicy takes on the hottest tech out there. Uh, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Oh, oh, and as always, thanks for watching.